motion is all around us. We are able to recognize motion whenever we see it. When a body changes its position relative to its surroundings, we say that the body is in translational motion. When that does not happen, we say that the body is at rest. If the body moves along a straight line, the motion is said to be in one dimension. By convention, this motion is positive if it is towards the right and negative if it is towards the left. To describe the change of position, we use two terms, distance and displacement. Distance is the length of the actual path between the initial and final position, whereas displacement is the length of the shortest path between the initial and final position. Now let us understand these two terms and the difference between them using some examples. So let's say we are in a city and there are these several positions A, B, C, D and E. And in our first example, our initial position is A and our final position is C. So the distance travelled would be from A to B to C and therefore the distance would be equal to 70 meters. However, the displacement is the direct path from A to C because that is the shortest and therefore displacement as calculated by the Pythagorean theorem would be equal to 50 meters. Now let's discuss another example. In this example, our initial position is A and our final position is D. So what is the distance? The distance is from A to B to C to D and therefore the distance is equal to 100 meters. However, the shortest path between A and D is this and therefore the displacement is equal to 40 meters. So from these two examples, it is clear that the displacement is always lesser than or equal to the distance. Now let's look at another example. In this example, our initial position is A and our final position is also A and therefore the distance travelled would be from A to B to C to D and then back to A and that distance would be equal to 140 meters. However, since the body was not at all displaced from its initial position, the displacement is equal to 0. Now let's look at another example. In this example, our initial position remains A and our final position is now E. So the distance travelled is from A to B to C to D and then to E and that distance would be equal to 190 meters. Now the body's displacement is towards the left that is in the opposite direction and therefore the displacement is equal to minus 50 meters. So why is displacement negative? Let's say we have this boy who is standing 5 meters away from a coffee shop and 5 meters away from a post box. This is his initial position. He then walks towards the coffee shop and stops at a final position. The length of the shortest path between the initial position and final position is 5 meters and therefore the displacement is equal to 5 meters. Now the boy is back to his initial position. Now this time he walks towards the post box and he stops at another final position. The length of the shortest path between the initial position and the final position is still 5 meters. However, the direction is just opposite to that of the coffee shop. 
So therefore we say that the displacement is equal to minus 5 meters. So from this example it is clear that displacement depends upon direction and therefore it is a vector quantity whereas distance has only a magnitude no direction and therefore it is a scalar quantity. And now the summary of this video. Distance is the length of the actual path between the initial and final position. Displacement is the length of the shortest path between the initial and final position. Displacement can be zero even if a body travels some distance. Displacement can also be negative if a body travels in the opposite direction. And that is why while distance is a scalar quantity, displacement is a vector quantity. So that's all in this video. In the next video, we will understand two other terms used to describe motion and they are speed and velocity.